Okay, so it's the next day now and the body pieces are blocking on my blocking mat. And now I'm going to get started on the sleeve. So, uh, my basic plan for this one is to keep it kind of narrow. We only need it to get up to 18 inches. Um, and I'm thinking I'm wanting a bit more of a gradual sleeve um, like this. So I'm gonna not show the pattern pieces, rather I'm just gonna put you right in there. Uh, what I'm going to begin with is the forest brown, same that I began with on the body piece. Um, and I'm going to use the four millimeter hook still because I wanna keep it extra tight. That's the goal here. Um, and this one, I'm going to begin with a chain of 35. Okay, um, and the rule for sleeves, same thing as the body pieces, you just need it to be an odd number. So if 35 doesn't make it around your wrist with a comfortable am amount of room, you can decrease it to 33 or 31, you can increase it to 37 or 39, it doesn't really matter. Um, the next step is the same as the body piece, we're going to do one, two, three, fourth chain from the hook. I'm going to complete a double crochet. And then I'm just going to double crochet across the um, foundation chain. So you could skip this step by beginning your sleeve with a double crochet foundation chain, um, but I find this to be really easy and really easy to correct if I make any mistake with the stitch counts. So this for me is the easiest right now, but maybe in the next sweater tutorial I will include a double crochet foundation chain or a single crochet foundation chain just so you can see kind of the the way in which I begin it sometimes uh, depending on if I'm making it on camera or not. I find that the regular chain is just the easiest way that the most people understand. Okay so now I'm just coming to the end of that first row I'm going to begin my double crochet and then I'm going to complete the double crochet with the tail from that sleeve um, mixed in. And that's going to do two things. Again, it's going to strengthen the side wall, which will act as one of the posts in the following row. Um, but it also brings that yarn tail up, making it easier to weave it in seamlessly and invisibly later. Now I'm going to complete four more rows, so five rows total, um, in the ribbed stitch. So I'm going to do four more rows, one this way, one this way, one this way, one this way, um, in that front post double crochet, back post double crochet, easy ribbed stitch, just to um, create the cuff. And I'm going to do that off camera because again, I filmed that several times for other tutorials. So I'm just going to complete that ribbed stitch. If you need um, a tutorial on how to create that ribbed stitch or you want to watch a sweater tutorial where I actually do go into it a little bit more, I will link both of those down below in the video description. Um, but for this video, I'm just going to do it off camera because it's a little bit faster when I'm not having to concentrate on keeping it in frame or in focus. So if you're making along with me, uh, just pause it here and come back once you've finished the rib stitch for your cuff. Again, this is super customizable. You really do not need to do it as many rows or as few rows as I do. If you want your wrist cuff area to be more um, of a statement, then you could do like as many rows as you want. Just um, finish it on an on the same side that your that your yarn ties off on. Finish it on that side and then you are going to be golden. So you could make it a really really narrow cuff or you could make it really broad. Just make sure when you're um, gonna switch into the half double crochet, which is our next step, that you are um, on the same side as the yarn tail. Okay, so I'm just finishing my fourth row in the um, rib stitch or fifth row total because we did that first double crochet row um, and now I am going to switch into my half double crochets um, 
Sorry, I'm just trying to get that last stitch in. There we go. Um, and in this pattern, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Usually I do one row of half double crochet, uh, just a regular half double crochet row on that first uh, row after the rib stitch. But what I'm gonna do this time is I'm going to start with an increase row. So that means the first stitch and the last stitch on this row are going to have two half double crochets in them. I'm still using that four millimeter hook and I'm using the gappy top part of the um, front post double crochet, back post double crochet stitch in order to uh, insert my hook there. I'm not inserting into the top of the hook, I'm in the top of the stitch, I'm inserting instead into the um, underside of the entire stitch. But on this first row, I'm going to increase at both sides. The difference between this sleeve pattern and some of the other sleeves that I've done um, for some of the other sweaters I've made is I plan on increasing every third row. So normally I increase every other row. I do one increase row, one regular row, one increase row, one regular row. But this time I want the increase to be a little bit more gradual. So, um, and by that I mean the sleeve will be a little bit more fitted um, and yeah, the, the sleeve itself, yeah, won't have as much bagginess to it. So I'm increasing on this first row on each end. The following two rows will be regular rows of half double crochet all the way across. And then, so this is the first row. The second and third row are going to be regular. The fourth row will be an increase. Five, six, regular, seven, increase. So that's how I'm kind of organizing it, just every third row. Um, so if you're making a long, you don't have to do this. You can increase every second row, you can increase every third row, you can increase every fourth row, you can increase it however you want, or you can increase every single row. It's totally up to you. It will change the look of the sleeve, and it may change how many increases you can actually do. Like if you start increasing on every fourth row, um, you might not be able to get your topmost portion of your sleeve to the 18 inches that we need it to be. So since that gap, let me just show you what I mean. This gap here is nine inches tall. So we need the top part of the sleeve. When it's folded over, it needs to be nine inches. So the sleeve needs to be 18. You could do an increase every single row until you hit 18 inches and then move up straight. It just means that your the long part of your sleeve this square portion will go a lot farther. Or you can, like me, increase every third row, and then you're gonna get a more tapered sleeve or a less drastic um, bagginess. But it's super customizable. The goal is just to make sure that at the widest, the sleeve is only 18 inches because it needs to fit into that space. But if you've made your space 19 inches or 20 inches or, or sorry, nine inches, 10 inches or 11 inches on that body piece, then you can just adjust the number of stitches so that it fits. So I'm going to keep doing this increase every third row for a total of many rows. Uh, but when I know, I will let you know, I know it'll go through all of the colors uh, before I need to um, square it off. So I'm going to have gone through at least, let's see, 16, 10, 6, so 32, at least 32 rows this way before, um, before it's time to just go up square. And I'm doing the exact same number of rows in each color that I did for the um, body piece. So if you're making along in a similar stripey way that I am, then you can do the same thing and just change your colors every, so I'm gonna do 16 rows of the forest brown and then I'm going to do 10 rows of the light brown and then six rows of sage and then 28 to 30 rows of the fur green. But I'm gonna just start with the 16 rows of the forest brown, increasing every third row. If 
Yeah, I'm just at the end of my um, forest brown 16 rows, and I'm going to transition now into the light brown, and I'm going to do 10 rows. I'm still increasing every third row, um, because that is the way I'm doing it. And you can see now, once it gets stretched out a little bit, it's a little bit tight because I'm working in really tight stitches, but once I get it all blocked out and stretched out, you can see the angle is still there. It's just not quite as drastic as with some of the um, previous sweaters that I've made. And I'm kind of in love with it. If you fold it over, you can see at this point um, how it'll look when it's a sleeve. So that'll be the where your wrist is and then it'll just kind of go up until it's at the armpit. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep working in this half double crochet um, way with the four millimeter hook. But now I'm going to use the light brown for 10 rows and then I'm going to switch into the sage. Also, if you haven't yet, um, now is a great time to hit that subscribe button. I do put out a new video every Tuesday, a new video like this, um, and I also live stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays of every week from 7 a.m. Eastern until usually 8.30, 9 a.m., and the videos come out on Tuesdays at 7 a.m. Eastern as well. So if it's something you're into, definitely hit that subscribe button. If you're not really interested in hitting the subscribe button, hit the like button. Let me know that you're here in some other way. And also, thanks for watching. I do appreciate you watching this far into the video. I, I see in my analytics sometimes around the, fi the final sleeve, the um, viewership drops off a little bit. So if you're still here, leave a comment that says you're still here and I'll, I'll definitely reply to you. I like replying to all of the comments. So yes, if you have anything to say, let me know because I like chatting in the comments and I like interacting with you guys. Okay, so I'm just at the end of my light brown rows, and now I'm going to switch into the sage green. So I'm going to complete six rows in the sage green, and then I'm going to switch back to the, not back, I'm gonna switch into the fur green. And we're still doing increases on every third row, so you can see how that's starting to progress now. Um, it's like a more subtle curve, which means, not curve, more subtle angle, which means the sleeve itself is going to end up um, a nice gradual taper as opposed to something a little bit more drastic, like if I did it on every other um, row. But it's still pretty close to how a regular sleeve looks just because I'm using a much smaller hook and I'm using a really tight tension. So it's going to make each row only take up like about a centimeter, whereas when I'm using a half double crochet in with a five millimeter hook, it's just a little bit bigger than that. So it grows up a little bit more slowly because I'm using the four millimeter crochet hook, but I think in the end it's gonna give us a really cool, very dense outdoor sweater sort of look. So still increasing every third row. Um, now I'm just using the sage. When I finish with the sage, we're going to do a few more rows in the fur green with the increases, and then we're going to work up in a straight rectangle. But I'm just going to get this sage part done first. So if you're working with me, um, continue for another six rows in whatever color you're doing for your stripe. Also, if I haven't said it yet, links to everything that I use are going to be in the description box down below. So if you're interested in any of the items that I'm using to make mine, uh, be it the journal I draw in or the yarn I'm using or the hook I'm using, you could definitely check those links. Um, I don't believe I'm affiliated with Amazon anymore because I didn't keep up whatever thing. So they're not affiliated links or anything, but they'll help you find what you're looking for anyway. Okay, so I'm just coming up onto the end of my sage green little portion before I switch into my fur green. I'm just gonna double check, when did I do my last increase? One, two, increase, one. Okay, good, we're not on an increase right now then. Okay, and now I'm gonna 
break the yarn and connect the fur green. But I do want to show you how much yarn is actually left from the sage because I measured it out by weight and I always, um, I don't know, scoffed at that, the idea that you could just weigh it out and know exactly, but look at the amount of yarn I have left over. It's exactly the perfect, just enough to sew together the sleeves in the end, which is amazing because it shows that the weight is a really nice and accurate way to um, use your yarn, honestly. Okay, so there we go. And now I'm gonna use, bring the fur green up one level with the sage there. Okay, turning and then I'm going to just keep going for a couple more rows with the increase um, on every third row. Right now I'm not on an increase row, so I'm gonna just keep going um, with the fur green. I think another few rows, let me just look. So in total on this sleeve, because I am trying to get to 18 inches across, um, I am going to end up doing 14 increases. So at this point I have, let me see, 1, 2, 11, okay so I currently have 11 uh, increases and total before we start going straight it's going to be 14 increases. So um, on every third row 14 times um, increase on both ends and you can switch your colors whenever you want to but at this point I'm doing 16 rows in the forest brown, um, 10 rows in the light brown, 6 rows in the sage, oops, sage green, and now I'm going to do 30 rows in the fur green and that should bring us right up to 21 inches in length. If yours is not 21 inches long, uh, which is the length I'm choosing for a petite sleeve, um, if you're trying to go for a regular body that is not petite, then you might need to add a couple of inches there. Um, so it might be more than 30 rows. If you have even shorter arms than my sweet mama, then you might need a few rows fewer than the 30 um, fur green rows that I'm doing. So total there, that means we're at, at this point, your sleeve should be 62 rows in the half double crochet. However, um, you're only doing 14 increases if you're increasing on the third row each time. It's a little bit, um, it sounds complicated, but when you're actually doing it, it's, it's not very hard. You can increase whenever you see fit, so long as the, you stop increasing when the sleeve reaches 18 inches across. That's 18 inches across this way, and I'm not at 18 inches yet. So I'm almost done the sleeve and I just took a big long break because I am tired of working in this fur green. Does that ever happen to anybody? I'm like over this color somehow. I love dark green, but for some reason right now I just wanna work with another color and I don't have another color to work with. This has to be done in the dark green. I'm finished, I'm just finishing up the last row now so I figured I'd come back in for that uh, and then it's time to block them. So I'm going to be doing that next, um, but I'm not gonna be doing that until a little bit later because I have to go out and do groceries with Alex now. So the blocking will have to wait, but I will show you what I do for blocking and what I use. Now that this sleeve is done, don't forget, you have to make two. And now these two sleeves are done, I can block them and then we will be able to fold them over and attach them into the final sweater. So, um, next shot you're gonna see is me getting these uh, sleeves into the tub and then onto the blocking mat. Also, I just posted this on Instagram a little while ago. Something I love about this yarn is that it has little pieces of hay in it. I don't know if that's something that's good for other people or bad, but every time I find a little piece of hay in my project after putting it together or while I'm crocheting it up, I'll find little bits of hay twisted in with the yarn and it makes me feel all kinds of ways because it's like it was on a sheep <laughs> and that's why there's hay in it. Anyway, I'm gonna bring it over to the tub now.
here. We go. Hi. Uh, okay. Welcome. I'm just blocking out this. Well, I'm not blocking them. I'm soaking them first. So I have my sleeves. I have a bathtub full of tepid water, which means slightly warm. And I put in one cap full of this Eucalan eucalyptus wool wash. Um, I don't care what it's called or anything. It just smelled nice. So that's why I bought it. So now I'm going to just soak those sleeves. The body pieces are already soaked and done. So the sleeves are just going to sit in the water. I'm going to get them all soaked. And I'm going to sit them in here for half an hour. And then I will block them out on my blocking mat overnight, which will allow me to sew it together on camera tomorrow. So I don't know if I'll show you the blocking because I showed it in the last video, um, how I do my blocking. It's not very interesting. It's literally just spreading it out on my blocking mats, which you can actually show if you just turn the camera down the hall. There's my blocking mats. Haven't even put them away yet, so I'm not gonna. Anyway, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow with these hopefully dry and then we'll sew it all together. Also, I made this one. This sweater. Also, I embroidered these jeans. <laughs> That's it. I'll also, see you tomorrow. Also, I can zoom in. <laughs> okay, bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. bye. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Ooh, transition. Oh no, wrong video. Yeah, that more like it. I didn't really know how to film this one because I didn't want to put it on a tripod because I have to put it right back on my uh, tripod, which is set up for my overhead shots. But this is how I pull out my blocking pins. So I use these little T-pins. I don't have the... Oh, that is the lid. They're called T-pins. I can't show you the box because I'm using the lid as the box. But 100 pins. It costs like $4 on Amazon. Um, you could probably get them anywhere. I was just wanting them to come in two day shipping, so I ordered them from Amazon. Um, I also got these, which I do really like, honestly. The only thing that I don't love about them, which is technically on purpose that they did it, they're friggin' sharp. These pins are like, they're very, very little and sharp. So dangerous, they always have to get put back into their little container. I'm just gonna put it down here. You can see my little sewing uh, tea cart that was my grandmother's. I'm just gonna pull out all these pins though because my sleeves are dry, which means as soon as I get these pins pulled out and bring it over to the overhead shot area, we can put the sweater together, which I don't know if you know friends, but I am very excited to do that. Alright, there it is. All the pins are out. My knit blockers are back in their safe box and my pins are not, not safe to be honest, but that's fine. And there we go. Ta-da! So now I will fold over these sleeves and they will get sewn in to the sweater body. So let's go over to the overhead shot and um, put this sweater together. Okie dokie, everybody. Today's the big day. Yesterday I blocked out the sleeves. Um, today the last clip you saw was me pulling them off of the block. Blocking? Out of the blocking? I don't know how to word that. Um, and now I'm just organizing my little station so that it is ready for me to put it together. There's my four millimeter. I was wondering where that went. Please ignore the sounds of sirens. I live in a city. There are always sirens. Okay, so the front looks obviously spectacular. So I know which side the front of the fabric is on this one. Now I just need to figure out which is the front on this one. So when I look at it, I see gap or edge and then rib. If you turn it over, it's edge space rib. So this is the front because there's always a rib first on the front side of the fabric. So I'm going to match up the two front sides. And it looks like they're not lining up, but I think I blocked it improperly. It's the same number of stitches. I just, I pulled one too tight and one's a little loose. So I'm going to slip stitch these guys together at the shoulder seams to begin with. 
I'm just keeping you zoomed out really far for this part because, um, uh, why? Mostly just because I want you to be able to see when I uh, attach the sleeves. So when I'm putting the hook in, both the front and the back should have 12 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, and 12. That's perfect. So I'm just going to go in through both sets. And I'm pulling up, I'm doing a chain one, and that's just going to secure that tail end for me so that I don't have to worry about anything. Not now, CJ, go away. Okay, and then I'm going to, uh, I don't know what I should do. No, I think I'll just insert into the top of each stitch as opposed to into the whole stitch like I've been doing. Um, I think that'll hide it a little bit better. And I'm doing a slip stitch not a single crochet that's just going to make it a little bit more uh invisible which is kind of what i'm aiming for for this one i'm still using the four millimeter hook as well so i'm just single crochet uh sorry slip stitching the shoulder seams together on both sides and then i will be attaching the arms and then we'll do the side seams and it's going to be just like all of the other sweaters we've made, really easy and really awesome in the end. It's gonna be so cool. I'm so excited to see it today. It's not gonna be finished today because I have to block it one more time, but at least I'll be able to try it on. All right, and then last stitch, half with a slip stitch. And then I'm gonna just spread it out so that I know I've got enough yarn to make sure that that doesn't shrink too too tight. We don't want the shoulders to be too tight. Pull those out. Make sure it looks nice as a seam. And then what I like to do too is I like to flip it over and look at what it looks like on the other side because it does show a seam. You can definitely see that little line right here. Um, I'm considering slip stitching through the whole stitch. I don't know if that will hide it better. I think after a wash it won't be so visible. It might just look like a row. I think I'll leave it like this. So also this looks wider but it's actually the same number of stitches. It's just again it has to do with that blocking. So when I block this out the final time I'll just make sure to keep a little bit more attention on the back panel. Okay now same thing. I'm gonna just clip that. We'll weave in that end after. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. There and there. This is my favorite part because it always feels like I'm going to have a sweater that's finished really soon once I'm working on the seaming. But the funny thing is that it's actually still like going to be a while until I can actually wear it because it's going to have to get blocked again and that's going to take a whole day so I'm going to have to wait all the way till tomorrow to actually like take it out for a run on the town, but that's all right. I can wait. I might wear this on on the weekend when Alex and I go to the market so I can get some cute Christmas market photos in it. I may actually film that. There we go, and last stitch, if it'll let me. There we go, and there we go. Perfect. I'll just pull that tight, clip it, and that part is done. Um, so I'm kind of a l like maybe a little nervous. I'm not hugely nervous, but I think I might have to do the collar in brown. I was intending on doing it in green, but I'm a little unsure how much I'm going to have left once I attach the sleeves. So we'll see, but there's a possibility that I'm going to have to do the collar in brown, which is fine. It's just, you know not what I originally planned. So there is what it's going to look like now with the shoulders done up. Um, now I have to put the sleeves in. So for that, what I'm going to do is just grab a sleeve, any sleeve, and I'm going to open this up with the wrong side or the, the inside facing up, facing me, because I'm going to want to attach this in um, so that the seam doesn't show up. That's the whole goal is to never have the seam show up on the outside. 
So there, this is all the inside of the fabric. I don't have a huge table, so I can't spread the whole thing out, which is okay. I'm just gonna do like this. And then I have to figure out what's the front and the back. So I do the same thing, double check both sides. So this is the front, meaning I want it facing the other way. And then I'm just gonna fit my sleeve in. What I do too is I fold my sleeve in half and then I try and line up the stitches. I don't really count it out, but I find the middle stitch or stitches if it's like not one. And then I just tie that part to the, um, the little tail that was left behind like that. And that just lets me kind of lay out the rest of the sleeve in a way that makes it easier to uh, make sure it stays lined up because I don't want my sleeves to come out uh, wonky. I want them to be really even and really pretty. And I'm going to use green or fur green I should say for this as well because um, it looks nice. Also I'm going to sew this part closed. I don't like to crochet this part because it's not an even number of stitches. Uh, the number of rows is not equal to the number of stitches so I'm just trying to make it work as best I can that way uh, by sewing it together. I'm gonna use a blanket stitch and I think the rule is usually it's two times as much yarn um, as the length of what you need to sew. And I'm doing a double strand because I want it to be the same thickness as the rest of the sweater, which is like a, a pretty thick crochet. I know what I can do, just one. And there we go. So I'm just gonna start at one side. I'm gonna try and remember how many rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen rows will fit. So that means I'm gonna need to stretch this one to fit 13 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's a bit different for both pieces, which is fine. It's just the blocking that'll fix it. Um, but I think I'm going to start it on 12 instead. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I might even start at 11, just because I know this is only 10 stitches. So. There we go. So this part, I'm gonna actually turn the autofocus off and I'm gonna put it onto manual focus just because I'm going to probably speed this part up just because it's not very interesting to sew um, a blanket stitch all the way around a sweater sleeve. So let me just do that now. Switch that to manual and then double check that we're in focus down here. Looks good, okay. Okay, so I did the rest of the other seam off camera because the uh, yarn ran out, so I turned off the camera and then I just finished it off camera. So now I'm making up for it by finishing the second sleeve on camera. I'm just doing the same stitch and this time I didn't have to um, lose the game of yarn chicken because I just added a little bit of length, which was actually pretty much the perfect amount very proud of myself here. Um, okay, now I'm just finishing that last stitch. I did blanket stitch again the whole way around. That's what I call it anyway. I think that's what it's called. hope that's what it's called. There we go. And then I'm just going to loop through the bottom, come back up. And then I don't tie off these ends when I'm sewing together the garment. I know you might think like, oh my goodness, you don't tie it off. What if it just comes apart? It doesn't. When you wash wool, after it's been sewn together, it like felts together anyway. So you could just sort of weave the end in, weave it a little farther maybe than what you would do um, for, I don't know, some other thing, but just weaving it into the seam you've already created, it's gonna be secure enough that way. So I do that, no knot at all, and then there we go. So now the sleeves are attached, both of them, um, and I can now fold the sweater over 
to make it look like a sweater. See, now we've got some sleeves, which need to be sewn together or crocheted together. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, but yeah, now you can see a lot more clearly how freaking awesome this sweater is. So now what I'm gonna do, oh my God, it's gonna be so cute. I'm so in love with it already. Flip it back inside out because when you're sewing it together, it should all be sewn inside out, just like your other clothes. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is starting at the bottom, I'm going to slip stitch with my four millimeter crochet hook. Um, I'm going to use the color of yarn that, uh, that the sleeve is at that point. So I'm going to do the forest brown, light brown, sage, and then um, fur green uh, as I can so that it will look completely seamless from the other side. Sometimes I'll just use one color and I'll do that for the whole way, but I, I don't know why I'm feeling like I really want to just make this absolutely, positively, 100% perfect. So my interpretation of perfect in this situation is that you won't even know that there are any seams at all. So I'm just going to slip stitch all the way through and that's pretty much the whole thing. I'm just gonna keep it going all the way up the sleeve with my little slip stitches and now I'm gonna drop that tail and I'll weave that in in the end. The really nice thing about using a small hook size when you um, half double crochet uh, each row you can only you can slip stitch just one time whereas with double crochet sometimes you have to fit two in each row this makes it so easy to assemble the final thing because I can just line them up like that and then you only have to put one stitch in every single row and it's like super easy to track and to keep everything super um, even and beautiful and super cool. I think I'm even. Let's just see. Oh, it already looks very good. Okay, so this part is almost done in the brown. I'm gonna have to switch to the light brown. I really played yarn chicken with this sweater again. I have nearly no yarn left in any of the colors. Um, so it's actually crazy to me. How this continues to happen. Every time I make a sweater it's like I'm so close to not having enough yarn but it always just works just fine. Everything fits together. I think using the slip stitch on the sleeve is nice um, just because it doesn't allow for as much stretch. I wanted there to be a little bit of stretch around that body that's why I did it in... oops am I uneven here? A little bit. Um, that's why I did it in sewing, like hand sewn it, sewed it back together. Um, but I don't want it to be, oh no, I'm okay. Sorry, it's the way, where I tied it off, it was hard to see. Okay, there, now I'm switching to green. Um, yeah, I'm doing it this way because I think it's more secure to slip stitch it together than it is to sew. I think it's also a little bit tighter. I don't know if that's true, it's just how I feel about it. So if you don't want to crochet it together, don't. <laughs> you can definitely sew it together, it doesn't really matter. As long as you make it stick together, that's the goal here. I just think slip stitches also look really pretty. Like in the final garment, it looks like a really nice finished seam. The blanket stitch is okay, but it's not as pretty as the uh, slip stitch. I find it to be really like pretty for a finished garment to have this nice clean line of stitches on it. It also makes the sweater uh, look really like, I don't know, clean, clean and finished, which I love. Okay, now I'm gonna switch back into the fur green, which I'm getting more and more concerned about because um, I don't know if I have enough to make the collar with. It doesn't really matter, but it feels like it matters. So 
a little bit nervous about that, but we'll make it work however we need to. I love falling in love with garments that I make. Honestly, it is such a joyful thing to make a piece of clothing. I wonder why everyone fell out of love with it. The world doesn't seem to enjoy making their own clothes so much anymore. I mean, I guess I don't enjoy making like underwear and socks, but, or tank tops really. But knitwear, I feel like it's weird that you even buy it anywhere because you can just make it. Also, I'm blocking, um, blocking, I'm, um, yeah, I guess that works. Putting them in the same box, crochet and knitwear. Because you don't call it crochet wear, do you? Oh my goodness, look how pretty it is. I'm so in love. and then I'm going to switch back to dark brown and then it's going to be Dunzo on one side. I'm going to do the other side off camera though so it doesn't end up crazy long. I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side after I finish with this side because the big important thing about sweaters is symmetry. Got to do to one side what you did to the other. Them's the rules. Unless you're making an asymmetrical sweater and that is up to you, I guess. There we go. So there's one side put together and ready to go. Now I'm just gonna do the other side off camera and then I'll show you how to do the collar. Okay, so I just finished up the other seam, so now the entire body is seamed together and the sleeves are seamed together. What I'm going to do to just finish off um, the inside, I'm going to leave the last little bit of forest brown, I'm going to leave it attached, and then I'm going to flip the sweater the right side out. So I haven't woven in any of my ends yet. I'm gonna have to do that after. But the next thing I want to do is just do slip stitches all the way around the bottom of the rib stitch here. So I'm going to just, where that yarn is attached at the end, instead of cutting it and being finished with it there, I'm going to just chain up one, which I've already done, and then I'm going to just slip stitch all the way around in each one of those gap stitches at the um, top or bottom of the chain, uh, sorry, of the rib stitch at the bottom most portion of the sweater along the rib stitch. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to both of the cuffs. And what that does is it just fills in that gap a little bit so it looks a little bit more um, put together and finished. It also will reduce the amount of stretch that happens around the body. It's just gonna tighten in those little, uh, not cable stitches, rib stitches. So nothing too special, just finishing it off with a slip stitch around. It just brings it all together. And then after that, we're going to, my ring is getting caught in it. We're going to um, finish the collar, which maybe, maybe, maybe I have enough green for. <laughs> we will see. Okay, so this is where we are at. When it's all sewn together, I'm literally obsessed. It's perfect. It's gonna fit her perfectly. I just have to do the collar now, and I'm gonna do that right now. But I just wanted to try it on for size, and it fits so well. It's got lots of room inside, and it's a little bit long, which I think is great for her. She's gonna like be able to um, like cozy up and read a book with it on. So now I'm gonna weave in the little ends from where I did the single crochet and I'm gonna just get started on the collar. Okie dokie. I have just finished weaving in, I just said, I'm not finished. I, 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 was, I was just finished weaving in my ends until I found one more end to weave in. And now I'm gonna get started on the rib stitch for the collar. As soon as I can get that hidden in into that shoulder seam. Jeez Louise, I was just, I just wove all this stuff in for like 20 minutes 
I miss one only as soon as the camera gets turned on. There we go. Okay, that end is now woven in. And now I'm going to get my four millimeter hook again. And I'm going to start at the shoulder seam or one stitch after the shoulder seam. Um, and I like to do it a stitch after because then when I join them, it's not uh, visible the where I'm weaving in the thread, the yarn. So I'm gonna start with a really not too long of a tail because I don't have a ton of this um, fur green left. I'm a little bit nervous about the limited amount that I have left. Not nervous, but you know what I mean. So I'm just gonna start with a chain one and then I'm going to do half double crochets all the way around just one round of half double crochets and that is going to be the basis for the next row which is going to have double crochets and the double crochets are going to be part of the um, part of the rib stitch so I'm just gonna go around first with my half doubles and I'm trying to keep it nice and tight um, so that it matches up with the body pieces which I did really tight the first time. Um, it's hard when you're doing the collar though because the body pieces have already been blocked so they're much softer and more stretched out which may make you think to make your collar stitches more stretched out a little bit gappier but you don't want to do that. Keep it as tight as you were working for the previous part because after the final block this collar portion will loosen up just the same way that the body did. So I'm just going to do that one round of half double crochets followed by three or four rounds of the rib stitch. So I'm going to do one row after this of double crochet followed by three rows of front post, back post, double crochet. And that will create that neck that we're looking for, the neckline I want. This first half double crochet row is just basically evening out all of the um, stitches from the hold on from the um, front and back pieces that come down so like you can see these stair how they look like little stairs these neckline by going around it once with the half double crochet we kind of eliminate that look and just sort of round it all out so that it's not um, really in your face in terms of the grading like the the little hill. I don't know how to name it, but it's basically just cleaning up that the edge of the neckline. And I don't count when I'm doing my neckline uh, the number of stitches. I should because you need to have an odd number of stitches in order to make the um, an odd number of stitches in order to have your neckline rib stitch end up with the exact number that you want so that it's even like you don't want to end up with two back post double crochets next to each other so instead if you have odd number of stitches you'll end up matching front post to back post in the round which will look much classier so if you are someone who counts your stitches then make sure you're making sure that there is an odd number if you're not someone who counts your stitches like me, then um, just be aware that if it's not odd, you might have to add a stitch or you might have to crochet two together um, in your double crochet, in your first round of front post, back post, double crochet. That's usually what I do. If I'm, if I'm off, then I'll just, um, I'll just add another post in secretly and nobody even has to know. And then I'm going to chain two. Now I'm going to go into every single stitch with my double crochets, still keeping them nice and tight. And then after this round, I'm just going to finish it up with, I think I'll only do two rounds of the front post, back post, because uh, I don't want the neckline to be too, too crazy high, but I also, um, want it to be high enough that when my mom wears it outside on the farm she'll be able to have a nice warm neck area not a turtleneck but something warm something that goes up the neck a little bit i'm literally so excited to cast this off or whatever you call it for crochet just finish i guess 
after this row I've so I've done the double crochet row and then one two and I'm on my third row of front post back post double crochet um, and I'm going to leave it at three I just wanted it to be high enough that it would cover uh, like if you're wearing a t-shirt you won't be able to see it after that I'm just going to do what I did on the sleeves and on the bottom cuff and that is slip stitch all the way around um, and that's just going to give it a nice a nice finished beautiful little look um, and then I will show you the final sweater so I'm just going to finish this round switch into my slip stitches and then I will show you how the sweater looks all finished and beautiful. I already tried it on and I am so in love with it. She's gonna love it. I really think she's gonna love it. I think it'll make her cry, which is usually my goal. Anytime I give my mother a gift that I actually tried, the goal is always to make her cry. And this is a gift where I tried. So I think she'll love it. I think she'll probably wear it on Christmas Eve, which I think is gonna be Great, or Christmas Day, whatever one we do our like family dinner. It moves around each year, it doesn't really matter for us as long as we all get together as a family. So whichever day we're all getting together as a family will be the day, oops, it's just a slip, will be the day she wears it. So I'm just gonna do one final try on, finish my slip stitch round, and then I will show you what it looks like. 